seems a bit reductive to reduce this sentient robot to just a sex toy. I absolutely agree. Can we have a half hour sincerity hour about that? Like, <laughs> oh, what oh about Sasha, are you, Sasha, what, what is your plan? Oh, there you got a cat head in the shot now. What's your plan here, girly? Bye. She gone. Yeah. All right. Pego. Pego is a pegging robot. Um, tall, dark, very smooth skin, robust and imposing, a little boxy. Um, obligatory boxy jokes. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll splice those back in. Uh, Pego came online when the ship went to yellow alert. Uh, Pego was dormant when not in use. So Pego's main, um, Pego is programmed to love and not much else. So Pego's main kind of angle on how to fix problems is through pegging or other forms of loving, which are in beta. All right. Oh, all and right. Pego does not need oxygen to breathe. That is Pego's, that is their unique talent. That is a very unique talent. Ah, good. I'm, I'm glad you've also gotten dressed for the occasion again. That's very important to me. I want you to know that keeps me in the experience. Yes, I am dressed <laughs> as a robot. Thank you. Yes, yes, definitely you, Kelly, and not our fine next character. Uh, Tanner, would you like to give your character? Uh, yes. Uh, Wilbeck Willie is a former sea captain uh, with some military and civilian sailing experience. Uh, something terrible happened to Wellback Willie in his past, uh, that he refers to as just the incident. Um, and his left hand has been replaced with a set of, uh, tongs, uh, that are, uh, he can use it to manipulate objects around him. Um, but of course not quite as well as with a hand. Uh, Wellback Willie is now deathly afraid of entering the water. Um, which is a good thing. He's a former sea captain. Um, I think that's everything. That's all, right. all you need to know. I think that's good for Wheelback Willie. And then finally, Nicole, bringing up the anchor, if you will. ER. Um, so my character's name is Helm McKeelstern. Um, I'm an old, grizzled. I look like I've been at sea for a while. I'm missing an eye and I have a peg leg. Um, I look like I've been at sea for a while, um, but once people talk to me for a bit, it clearly it quickly becomes very apparent that I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know how to sail. Probably never sailed in my life. Am I a real am I a real sailor? Am I suffering from a bout of amnesia? Am I a grifter? Um, who's to say? All right. And when we left our intrepid heroes. They had just activated the ship they were exploring, and it was headed to a destination quite a distance away. Now, the trip itself was going to take a lot of time, so we're just going to skip forward to the point where they're just about to arrive at the set coordinates. The ship cruises towards its destination, growing, groaning under the strain of water pressure and substantial damage. From... The main hallway where they had first entered, where the sub is still wedged, the console that they originally used to enter the captain's quarters buzzes to life. With a click, click, click sound, you see a text scan across the screen asking ascend, question mark, with a Y and an N for answers. Quick question. Um, I Am I still stuck in the... Hole that I'm oh, playing yeah. with my pen. <laughs> you sure are, buddy. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Just checking. The whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how long we've been traveling for. I've just been stuck with my hole in the ground. Let's just say this days and days. So I hope you can remove that leg at some point, or you have been making that corner your own corner. Oh, boy. What if I was born with it? What if Maybe I was they're born with I it. Am? <laughs> yeah, maybe born with it. Oh boy! Well, maybe that's it's gonna be a pretty ripe uh -huh. corner, is what I'm gonna say. Pretty yeah. ripe corner. For the record, how long have I been in this corner, blocking this hole with my peg leg? Multiple days. Oh boy! Cool. <laughs> and so this this has sort of been implied then by the story is that neither Pego nor Whaleback Willie went to go help Helmut Kielstern at any point. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, kind of checks out for Pego, because Pego likes to assist, but what is Pego going to do to seal that up? Well, wait, is it about sealing wait. the hole, or is it about getting the leg out of the hole? 
I was like, couldn't well, Helma Kielstern's leg still be plugging the hole and just detached from? Well, that's the question. Helma is can, can Helma Kielstern detach the leg? I guess we have to ask the character that. Yeah, can we? Yeah, can we roll can for we that? Ro- can we roll for strength? Yes, let's. What, 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 are, what are our options here? Here, I, I've, I've closed that sheet. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just roll for strength while I panically open up the the rest. See of the if stats. we can see if we can wrench it out of there. Okay. Um, I have okay. I'm a regular at at strength. So wait, are we trying to pull the peg out of the hole, or do I try to pull the, your? Yeah, body are you trying no. to peg? No, no, no. <laughs> if we pull the peg yeah. out of the hole, the ship is going down. Yeah, we want to okay. leave the leg in the hole. Yeah. Wait, is that okay. hard? Like, how are peg legs attached? Aren't they just kind of sitting in a like a cup, like Terry Fox style? It's been there a long, a long time. I I don't know. I was I was imagining this one being like screwed in or something, so it would take a lot of lot of force to get off. Yeah, like screwed into your bone end. Yeah, yeah. We that play for keeps. Horrible. Is that what? You don't fuck that's, around. that's not a real thing. That's not what pirates do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, man. I, I mean, I feel like it's incumbent on the. Uh, the we are sailing. Like, we are sailing in a sea of blood right now. So I think that's not the most extreme thing in the world. To have a is, screwed in, pretty intense prosthetic leg. Oh, I got a twelve. You got a twelve. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you want to wrench that leg off so that you can <laughs> use facilities and eat. Okay. I'm going to say you managed to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can I yeah. Can we say that like the, because I got a twelve that they immediately thought of and did that? <laughs> yeah, so you don't okay, smell well, like piss and shit now that you're yeah. getting off. <laughs> okay. I do have a crutch, so oh, there I you can go. still get around. You can still get around and there's just your peg leg sitting there in this hole plugging it. Uh-huh. And we're all in the room when this happens, right? Yes. And then McHale Stern, may I please Wait, hang on. Are you getting music when I do that? No. Oh, okay. Mix it up. Okay. Right, anyway. Only oh, the music of Pego. <laughs> <laughs> Ensign McKeel Stern, may I apply some soothing balm to your wound? Uh, Josh, do I have a wound? <laughs> no, no. I think he just, because you've detached your leg and he is not the smartest robot in the world. But it was screwed world. into your leg and you <laughs> ripped it out with like the... Yeah, but I've got make her make a strength. That means I healed up right away. Did you just also? Did you just call me Hanson? I, we we've had this exact conversation. Ensign. Two episodes Ensign. ago. Oh. Because I assumed your rank was Ensign. Oh. Yeah, yep. you could be. You could do like a Leslie Nielsen bit. I am serious, but don't call me Shirley. <laughs> kind of thing. Fair. <laughs> um. And yeah. Susan McGillstern, are you sure you do not want some salve rubbed on your stub just in case? Yar, yeah, I'll, I'll take your stub. Wait, do I have to put my peg leg, in, my leg stump in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, it can be applied <laughs> externally. Not all healing has to be penetrative. <laughs> I, you may oh, find I... you have you may find sex i mean you may find healing more enjoyable for everyone involved if you are all willing to redefine what healing is (laughs) i i only want the salve if it means that i can put my my leg in your mouth i don't want it applied any other way (laughs) affirmative you may place your leg into my access port do you want me to apply it sensually or normal style (laughs) is there like a another extreme there does it is there a third option that's like maybe a little bit rough if i'm into that (laughs) you know being a sailor and and used to a rough life i mean of course (laughs) affirmative please note roughness is in beta mode do you want to proceed? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I can handle it. I'm, I'm pretty tough. I've been sailing for a while, so. <laughs> All right. So if I'm if I'm going to be rough, and we're going to see if Helma Kielstern can handle it, does that mean like maybe I'm rolling an opposed strength against his resilience? I was going to say, um, 
strength versus <laughs> resilience myself, actually. So yeah, that works perfectly. Okay, I have neither of those things. Oh, you're normal? N- normal style? I am, <laughs> I am normal style, unlike <laughs> this <laughs> situation. <laughs> to happen. Okay. Oh boy, not looking good. Oh, good lord, I rolled a four. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm also normal style, and we're about to find out how well lined up this uh, new and improved dice cam is. I see a six. Yes, I do. I do see a six. So what happens is when Pego decides to get a little rough with the healing, you feel something. And it's not pain. But maybe it is pain. But maybe it's something deeper than pain. Something tied towards pain. Maybe you feel a little bit of pleasure going along with it. Oh, no. I need you to roll your (laughs) resilience again. Oh, no. Am I going to (laughs) come? Oh, thank God. I got a 10. You managed to restrain yourself (laughs) and allow Pego to continue... The healing process, but you think along the line or along the way, you might have picked up a new fetish. <laughs> new, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just discovered it. <laughs> so yeah, you've had the salve applied to you. Cool. And so Whaleback Willie was just like watching, right? Like just sitting <laughs> just in the extra <laughs> chair across the room. <laughs> Is he also? We have a chair fetish? in the room so you can watch medical procedures. <laughs> Every that medical was, bay has the the watching chair. Yeah, the observation. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was considering our options. Uh, I was I was thinking on the eternal question of uh, ascend, yes or no. Uh, that was that was the question, right? It that was, was yeah. Ascend, it just says not, yeah. It just says ascend. Yeah. Okay. Like to the surface of the water, or to like it's an the ethereal rapture. plane. <laughs> yeah. It, it so, nearly says ascend. Sorry, have we traveled through the lake of blood or like off the planet and through space? In the blood still. Oh, so we're just like, we're submarining around. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so the, the peg leg isn't like protecting us from a vacuum, it's protecting us from just like flooding. Flooding, yeah. B- blooding. Blooding, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure that's a military term. Okay, and... The thing is on, the, the ship that we're on is on some sort of autopilot to get to the Destin. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Willie, I... Oh, no, wait. I was calling you Captain Admiral. Captain Admiral Willie. No, wait, was it, was it Admiral Captain? Admiral Somebody go back and watch the episode. I think it was Admiral Captain. I think he said we could call him, what, we could call him Whale back. And we'll edit all this out. Admiral Captain Willie, are you certain you want to ascend. It appears we are already on a set course. Let's do it. All right, so you're going to press the Y key? Why not? Spring break. I'm going to I'm going to press it. The ship shudders and begins still moving forward, but slowly you feel like when you're in an elevator that starts going up for the first time, you feel that little bit of pressure on your body as you, the ship begins to ascend. And ascend, and soon. And it is ascending me. I can't say what I wanted to say there, Kelly. It would have been mean. Yeah, you would never. I would never do that. And then, what after, What seems like only a few minutes, you feel the ship stop ascending, and slowly begin slowing as it bumps up against a hard surface. Is it how McKeel's turns dick? Because it's still hard for the healing? I'm so sorry. Please continue. <laughs> Just waiting for you to get it out of your system. I knew something was. <laughs> I'm on my third drink, so. How did your dick get outside the ship? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my cat's being a big distraction. Sorry, I need it's, to move it's her for canon a now. That happened. That's fine. You do that, and we'll just sort of GM ourselves. Give me half a second here. Sasha, you are adorable, but you're kind of actually a pain in the ass right now. So, so I'll just Don't do my Josh GM voice. Don't you talk to her that way. There we go. Good girl. Okay, so as you continue to mash the ascend button, 
Uh, <laughs> your ship triumphantly passes through the whatever ceiling it was, and uh, a bunch of unicorns fart rainbows at you, and you win. You've you've nailed it. You've nailed the exact tone I was going for. Another message scrolls across the console screen. It says, airlock released. And a sharp hiss is heard. Wait, the ascend button is the airlock release button? <laughs> well, you've stopped ascending. Like, oh. So I'm going to go towards, the, I'm assuming there's some sort of like ladder to get out of here. Yes. I'm going to kind of like fumble towards it because I just want to have my back turned to everyone else so I can hide my boner. That's that's very fair. Because I'm see- still thinking about <laughs> sticking my leg in Pego's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you see a uh, a ladder descend from a small slit of light from what appears to be a porthole near the roof oh. of the dining hall. <laughs> <laughs> a small slit and a porthole. Uh-huh. <laughs> the Kielster is having a rough time of it right now. <laughs> Yeah, um, Kilstern puts uh, pops two fingers into the slit and one into the porthole. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be resilience rolls for the rest of the game at this rate. <laughs> so okay, so the airlock open, not like there's a there's a air breach, just like it is opened into open air. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. That was, that, that was gonna be real bad it. for the other two, but <laughs> yeah, you would have been fine. <laughs> well, fine. I might just cause a whole breach on purpose just if I get bored. <laughs> All right, so you're going to send up the ladder then? Uh, I don't think I can. Because <laughs> I'm have, i kind of a big box on treads. I, <laughs> you you I totally do. are. I, I, wanna, I oh, do oh, want to ascend the ladder. All right. and uh, I want to look at both of them but kind of before he <laughs> leaves the room. And Human roommates, I was not programmed to ascend ladders. I was programmed <laughs> to love. What should we do? <laughs> Um, uh, so I, I think what I we need- have quite the affinity for Pego now, and I can bear to leave him behind because he's opened up a whole new side of me that I never knew I had before. So I'm going to stick my crutch down the hole, and I'm going to say, uh, uh, Pego, why don't you try putting this here <laughs> crutch in in your mouth, um, <laughs> and, and I'll pull you up by it. So you want me to like close my. Yes. front hatch onto the crutch and just sort of bite <laughs> bite down yeah. on the crutch. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to need you to roll a uh, strength roll, Nicole. And uh, I'm also going to get you to roll strength test there, uh, Kelly, although I expect it'll be a low one because I expect a robot can clamp onto things relatively well. Uh, I got a six. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm apparently not good at strength, so we'll see. Well, we'll see, I guess. Do you want to turn my camera on? I spent so long on this. I spent fucking 400 bucks on this camera. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, it's my phone. God damn it. <laughs> $400 well spent. All well, right, it's so. also a phone. So eight, is that your roll? Um, for me, it's kind of covered by the timer and the eyeball, so I can't. Let's just, yes, it's eight. I yes. guess I could look at it in real life. Yeah, that would be, or I can do that. Yeah. Uh, so eight, and you rolled a six. Okay, with great difficulty, you managed to haul Pego out of the the hatch there and onto the surface of the boat. And as I'm being pulled up, I'm elated because I've never really experienced like verticality before. <laughs> You're and, just, and I say, just stoked. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is exhilarating. <laughs> I have never felt this way before. <laughs> and I'm also kind of exhilarated because this crutch is an extension of my body and so seeing it <laughs> in your mouth is like getting me going again <laughs> the oh, kill screen oh, is just yeah. a whole new level that's, of things now <laughs> that's the stuff <laughs> alright I'm just As watching you... all this from below just shaking my head disapprovingly <laughs> <laughs> the, the degeneracy on this ship yeah like it never you happened could have when been, you were in you charge you could have been helping by pushing from the bottom but you're just like no <laughs> They've got this. <laughs> Pushing from the bottom is Pego's job. I don't even want to get involved. <laughs> so you, uh, yeah, so all three of you managed to get up on top of the ship there. And you look around and it appears to be some sort of like 
dock on a small... <laughs> you doing okay there, champ? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Sorry, go ahead. There's a dock. A dock. Do you want to go over what just happened there? <laughs> We'll fix it in post. <laughs> oh, great. For the record, Ryan Thanks made chili for dinner tonight. What was that noise? <laughs> Did I cause you harm? <laughs> Now see what's great is that like my my internet has been really choppy and it's going in and out, but like I definitely heard that. <laughs> Good. So, Good. Catch so, all the important parts. The uh <laughs> It's on a dock that appears to have only one other structure on it. The dock itself to be it seems to be made out of a hard rock surface, and the dock just built into it. And then there's a large monocolored structure with large spires and spe- uh, and whatnot on its roof and stained glass windows. So I noticing that uh, Willie has come up the ladder behind us, I, uh, I turn to him and say, Admiral Captain Willie, I hope you did not feel <laughs> like you were not welcome to participate in that extractive maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only thing more beautiful than uh, teamwork shared between two people is teamwork shared between three people. <laughs> it's all right, son. I got up to plenty of that when I was in the Navy. <laughs> Affirmative. All right, so okay, so what was in front of us? I was thinking about bits. There's a giant (laughs) sprawling vista. How you got got those out of your system? It's the Uh, the, no, but go on. The island itself appears to be made out of just like a hard rock substance. Um, the the dock is built into it. It's not broken into or or anything like that, and it's a strange off white color. On top of that, there is a another structure that has spires and stained glass windows all over it and it seems to be made out of the same white rock surface is it bone can we test it to see if it's bone i don't know how you test it see if it's bone but you can yeah pago uh do you mind taking a chomp out of this (laughs) can you just bite some more things Um, i mean pego does have (laughs) the the r2d2 arm he does yes I don't remember. Did it get damaged or did the port I was trying to use get damaged? I think the port you were using got damaged. Okay. Well, I mean, surely in the in the time we were traveling under blood, I had enough time to fix it. So yes, I'm sure. Um, if anybody is just so this isn't a function of anything. If anything <laughs> bad happened, we've now retconned it. So yes, it's fine now. So this isn't a function that the the mouth hole takes care of. This is this <laughs> is the robot arm. Um, I feel like there's different ways of sampling. So like. I've already used my robot arm to drill into it and, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of extract some samples to analyze what the composition is, maybe whether it's radioactive, Mm -hmm. maybe how old it is. I think that would all be the R2-D2 arm, whereas the front port, I would maybe put a small rock Mm -hmm. sample inside of or a sample of whatever inside of to kind of see how it tastes. Right. There's different methods of analysis. Put that multi-purpose mouth hole to use. (laughs) (laughs) Not the first time you've said that, is it, Wellbeck? <laughs> it is not the first time I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to kind of drill into the substance a little bit. All right. And uh, do my, you know, my full spectrum of analyses on it. And because this is a very, there's a lot of unknowns we're dealing with. Uh, well, actually, we'll see what I can analyze, but I may or may not do further tests. All right. So... To see how much you managed to get out of it, I'm going to get you to roll an intelligence roll. Hell yeah. You know I'm good at that. Ew, Look at nice that. One. Oh, that was perfect. Another thing people are missing out on if they're listening. So we got an eight there, if that's what it looks like right there. You yeah. are able to discern that it is mostly made out of calcium. Mm. So like, t- like teeth? Yes. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. you you know I'm not I I don't I'm not a smart man. I don't consider myself a smart man, but I'm sensing a theme here with the uh, natural um, outcroppings and things that are happening on this planet. Um, I suspect we should keep our eyes open for more weird body parts. Affirmative. Okay. All right. I think uh, one one of you guys should lead the charge into that building there. I think uh, we should go there for sure, but like maybe someone else first. What is the terrain like? Like, what's the the actual? Relatively smooth, a few ridges, a little bumpy in some spots, but a relatively even walking surface. And you're not just talking about Will back Willie's asshole? I don't know. No, you you, you stretched for that one, much like Will back Willie's asshole. Ah, stretch. Ah. <laughs> hey So there's there's one building. Is that what we said? Yeah, just one building. I want to go in the building. Yeah. So yeah. So like, doesn't it doesn't seem like because I mean my treads are built for like really flat spaceship floors. So it's is it am I going to handle okay on this? You, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. It'll just be like there might be an occasional bump, but you won't like high center or anything like that. Okay, good. Because like the the design of Pego is like unforgivably low riding to the ground. <laughs> like yeah, people with like, tuners like, would be. I feel like I have like maybe three inches of clearance. Like a high center on a speed bump, kind of low. Well, like a speed bump is fine because if you imagine like big triangular treads, they're going to kind of just roll flat over it. Uh, oh, yeah. Like if I tried to straddle a speed bump, I might yeah. high center. Yeah. 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 So okay, okay, yeah. I don't I don't get to straddle speed bumps. So it's just part of the it's part of the difficulty of being Pego is you don't get to do the things that other people get to do. Like, you know, <laughs> just straddle a speed bump. Yeah. All right, so you head towards the building then, and the first thing that draws your attention is that there's a door with no handle, and the only reason you can tell it's a door is because you can see the slight seams in the wall itself, and then a small slot in the middle. Well, I put my R2-D2 arm in the slot. (laughs) Naturally. Put put your dick in it. (laughs) Well, if it wasn't damaged... (laughs) If it wasn't damaged before, it is now, because you feel like... A punching I put motion. It in gently. On, you no, but you once it's in there, you feel a punching motion, and an object oh, cle- I'm punches damaged, straight not the door. into it. Yeah, yeah. They are, you know, I hear with things like this Ow. that you should use lots of lube. They say that more <laughs> is more in this situation. <laughs> so the punch extracts itself, and I am nothing happens. Critically low on lube. Your uh, your arm is now have a, has a hole punched in it, and nothing responds. No, did I kind of like that, you know, rough, painful experience? <laughs> Roll a resilience. Let's find out. All right. You resist the urge to develop a new fetish. <laughs> Hell yeah. But he I is still damaged, number right? One. Yes, he is still damaged. You extract the arm and you see that there is a small hole, only about an eighth of an inch in diameter, punched. I see, clean we're still the misgendering arm. the robot. Well, let there this be a, w- a warning to you, son. This is what happens when you go sticking your dick in strange holes. <laughs> uh, Admiral Captain Willie, please do not misgender me. <laughs> I am not anyone, son. <laughs> <laughs> You've told me many it that many, many times before. Mistitling I'm, me. <laughs> I'm trying to improve myself. I'll get better. What matters is that you are. Sitting your crusty ass down and listening. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so we still need to get in the door. Yes. Has anything has anything changed about the door? Nothing at all. Okay. Uh well, my perception's pretty good. I'm gonna try and perceive a uh I don't know, some kind of latch or button or buzzer or something that's going to help us open this door. Can I do All that? Right. Yes, you can. All right. Uh, so if I'm good at it, do I, I roll? Two How sets do I do of, that? you roll four dice, uh, two sets of two, uh, okay. because you're checking, you're taking the and best take, of those two rolls. Take yeah. the highest two. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, that would be 11. All right. As the arm of Pego is returning to them, you notice that the hole is so tiny that it could just be a very large gauge needle that punched through it. Yar. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Do you think this might be like one of those blood oath things? Like, do you think maybe your blood would open it if it was human blood? No offense, Pego. There's not that there's anything wrong with being a robot. I think. And wonderful. without even really listening just, to your apology, yeah. Pego just kind of like uses the RT charm to seize your hand <laughs> and just be oh, like, "Oh God!" Great idea. And starts moving it towards the hole. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take a, a strength roll for Pego and a reaction roll for Helma Keystern. I don't. I feel like it. I don't know that I'm trying to force it. I just assumed that it was a suggestion, so I'm just kind of doing it. Mm, but like the strength itself will just be like whether or not you can, they will react in time to you just like helping them along. I got a seven. You got a seven? Yeah, because I am definitely right. pulling away. I have I, I am bad at bravery. <laughs> so I'm rolling an opposed strength or opposed reaction? Opposed strength in this case. Because uh, you might not know your own strength. You think you're helping, but you're just you're guiding too hard. And that's an eight. Not an eight. Oh, no. So you aren't able to snatch your hand away in time before it is <laughs> put into the slot by Pego's arm, and you feel a sharp, brief flash of pain as a needle drives into your hand and traps it there for a few seconds. <laughs> Yar, ow. I already lost some digits. I can't afford to lose any more. The needle extracts itself, and you're able to pull your hand out. Okay. And... The, the slot all of a sudden seals, like, with a pneumatic force that seems like it would just shear a hand right off if it was still in there. Good lord. And the door creaks open on hidden hinges, revealing Ooh. a, a what well, looks to be almost like a temple room. There's lots of pews and more uh, off-white bone spires ca carved into ornate shapes. Leading towards so we're doopy bone giant. then. It is bone, right? <laughs> we're, we're, that's canon now. It is bone. I mean, it's uh, it's a rock made out of a lot of calcium, but not entirely out of calcium. Yeah. Henson McGilster, that was excellent work on sticking your hand into the hole. You know, actually, after I'd done it, I realized that like it's kind of. You know, it is sticking an appendage into a hole, and I kind of liked it in that fashion. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you for pushing my limits, Pego. Uh, you really are teaching me new things about well. myself. Would you like to do it again? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe, maybe later. Maybe, yeah. Uh, you know what? Actually, my hand does need healing now that it's had a needle through it. Could I? Could I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like insert, a like a hypodermic needle. Into your mouth, please. It's Once again, Pego has gotten healed. a little overexcited and is kind of like 90% of the way through the question and they are already bringing Helmut Keelstern's hand into their mouth. Excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, that's the stuff. Oh. While, while the other two members of the party are pleasing each other. <laughs> <laughs> healing, healing each other. <laughs> Whaleback Willie. There is no pleasure to me. I exist only to please <laughs> others. Whaleback <laughs> Willie, I am I am starting to look around this uh this temple, this bone temple, temple of the bone that we find ourselves in, and I realize that it starts to look very familiar, like I've been here before. Oh my. And I think back to one of my younger days, uh, when I was sailing in a less than legal capacity, uh, and we we conducted quite a uh, quite a profitable raid on a temple that looked a lot like this one. All right, so I'm gonna get you to roll a perception then. Uh, perception five. Uh, 12. I have two sixes. 12. Oh, full crit here. The memories rush back into your head like a tidal wave. And you remember seeing, as your mates were carrying off the loot from the temple, figures that looked exactly like the ones carved into these, uh, these white rock feet, uh, spires with 
tentacles for mandibles and long and gangly hands and a face that isn't quite rendered correctly. It almost looks like every time someone tried to sculpt the face itself beyond the mandibles, it starts to get lots of chips and carves and slashes into it. Yeah, or did, did anyone else read a, a book by a, a horror author from back in the day about Cthulhu? I think it was called. Does this sound familiar to anyone else? Scanning archives for <laughs> sad information. I I seem to remember that his cat had a name that we can't repeat on the stream. <laughs> Yar, I do remember the author himself being a bit of a bastard. Results found. I have found 628,000 fan fiction entries for Cthulhu. Would you like to start? Would you like to go through them from most to least erotic? Yes. <laughs> can we can we sort the erotic ones by the numbers of times the word tentacle is used? If that means that we can find more options of appendages going into other things, then yes, I would like to. I would support this decision. What does McKeelstern's browser history look like? <laughs> yeah, I am f- <laughs> like if I if I had a phone right now, I'd be frantically Googling <laughs> like everything to do with this. I've just found a new fetish and I want to know everything about it. Results prepared. Please note that much of this data is ancient and may be corrupted as a result. Results may be presented in ways that seem poorly improvised. Chapter one, the old man and the tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> the next three hours are spent with <laughs> Pego giving detailed, lurid descriptions of various archived fan fictions of Cthulhu. And from that, if we can all, all three of you roll a perception here. Well, I got a 10. Uh, I have a 10. A 10, a 10, and... I have a... Oh, that that's a 9. All right, so you're able to all piece together from the various uh, fan fictions some common themes. You're really failing at putting this into camera shot. Uh, no, some perfect. various themes that make you think that these at least are part of a general mythos. Uh, And so as a result, you feel like you understand this elder god a bit more than when you first started. Uh, And as you contemplate, your eyes slowly glide over to the giant altar in the center of the temple. And and so this this is just at the end of that three hours, right? Yes. And so from that day forward, the tentacle (laughs) felt like a whole new appendage and would never forget that extremely steamy and illuminating night. The end. Oh, fuck yeah, that's the stuff. (laughs) Epilogue. (laughs) 16 years later... Uh, and then, yeah, there's another, like, 20 minutes of that. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll just, we'll, we don't need to go do that. We'll jump ahead another 20 minutes. And from this grand corruptive, I apologize. The epilogue cannot be completed. Do you want me to attempt again from the beginning? Yes. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Don't 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 look at the altar. We have time. <laughs> yeah, we Delay just want to request. We're just gonna keep hanging out until something happens because like <laughs> we're just not feeling like there's like a lot we want to like really actively do. We're kind of having a lot more fun with the tentacle erotica than like archaic I think, tentacle I think, erotica. Uh, I think uh, kind of uh, Whaleback needs to roll a resilience because he is he is not having a good time right now. Resilience, <laughs> resilience. All right. Uh, I'm normal at that. So let's see. Let's see if I can resist the 
erotic temptation of the tentacle. Uh, a 12? A 12. Good lord. <laughs> Fucking crits for days here. My, I mean, my dice we're, are we're taking his word for it, but... That's true. Here, uh, I, can, I, can, I can show them to you. Oh, yeah, he picked them up very strategically there. <laughs> no, for real. He's, I'm, he's, uh, I'm an honest <laughs> captain. Wilback has decided that he, when he hears the yes, his heart sinks. He can't handle another three hours of this. And he launches into the most verbose and panicked reasons why we should not repeat the three hours of fan fiction. Wow, that feels like railroading. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, uh, regarding the request to hear the story again, if I remember these folk correctly from my time, uh, on this island, uh, they they don't like to have their dirty laundry aired uh, in such a way uh, with all these stories being repeated. And they say that if you repeat them enough, they'll come and visit you in person and and act them all out. I I I, I that sounds wrong, and I think we should <laughs> risk it. <laughs> oh, Admiral I... Captain Willie, you are mistaken. These stories are from Earth. Or whatever our home planet is, <laughs> they are not from this strange tooth island. I'm visibly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I noticed that uh, Helmut Kielstone is disappointed and say, "Oh, I thought it was. I thought that you. Oh, oh dear. And ending program. And then like uh, Pego gets really quiet." <laughs> like even the whirring of their servos gets kind of like a lot <laughs> quieter admiral captain willie i believe it was you who wanted to move on perhaps you would like to offer a suggestion uh did we did we say that there's some sort of altar yes in, this, in the I center of my arm yeah. into the altar <laughs> not yet we might need that later <laughs> But it doesn't pay to default to always sticking your arm in things I've found in life. <laughs> and then he he holds I, up his he holds up his clickers. Uh, his, yeah, his, uh, I, his I respectfully disagree. Have I ever told you about the incident? <laughs> Negative. Well, I think now is hardly the time, but I'll tell you <laughs> some, sometime, sometime later. Uh, Let's check out this altar. Let's let's Wait, see what we've the, got up here. Yeah, in 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 the incident, did this happen to be you sticking your arm into a hole of some sort? Because I think we have time to hear <laughs> that story. Well, <laughs> well, you see, <laughs> the thing about holes is they <laughs> they need to be filled with something. <laughs> and Yarp. when you're a when you're a young sailor, when you've only got you're 25 years under your belt. Uh, you, you don't know too much about the world, and, uh, well, you learn quickly uh, out on the open sea, and sometimes uh, one man's hole is another man's treasure. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, I can confirm it, this is the case. Anyway, long story short, no, I did not lose my hand by sticking it into a hole because I was much, much smarter than that. I lost I am, it to I am a... instantly not interested anymore, and I wander over to the altar. <laughs> as, as you're wandering away, I trail off with my explanation that I, I lost it to uh, a coconut crab migration. Uh, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I, 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 I lost my, my hand to the crabs. <laughs> As uh, as me and Wilback Willie are f kind of following at a bit of a distance behind Helmut Kielstern towards the altar, I kind of do a robotic whisper toward toward Willie. Admiral Captain Willie, do you think that Helm? Or I mean, do you think anyone? Do you think it would be cool if I got a tentacle? <laughs> I have the capacity. <laughs> Or self modification. I think you can have to I, look okay, inside can I, your. Can I roll a perception check to see if I hear this? Yes, you absolutely Conversation. can. Okay. <laughs> I got an eight. 
Yeah, Nate, unfortunately, you are not able. You can hear that they're whispering, but you can't pick it up. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, all I'll say about that is you need to look inside yourself and decide if you really do want it, because uh, sometimes the tentacle is not always greener on the other side. Uh, there, there are many complications that come with life with a tentacle. Agreed. Performing self-diagnostic. And uh, the like lights that make up uh, Pego's facial display just kind of go dark and Pego gets quiet again and kind of stops moving. All right. As you come upon the altar, Helmut Kielstern, you see scratched into this solid block are a bunch of letters that appear to be not in any proper order that you would recognize, but there are spaces between various groupings, almost like these are words. Uh, E.R., uh, Pagel, being that you'd be, as we all know, programmed to love. Be you programmed to love in other languages? Please wait. Performing self-diagnostic. <laughs> Is this one of Pego's five love languages? <laughs> <laughs> Self-diagnostics? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pego's love languages are um, pegging and self-diagnostics and analyzing and healing. And the fifth one is still in beta mode. <laughs> but it is uh, it, it is aggression. It is aggression. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, you liked it, so... <laughs> Yar, that'd be true. <laughs> there be no denying that. Okay, um... Can I... I, need I... You, uh, I was gonna say, you need to roll a resilience first, Nicole, before you do anything else. Oh boy, I got a three. Now, as you look over the words, you feel a pressure in your head. A pressure exuding extreme force and you feel your lips twisting as you're forced to speak the words on the altar. Oh. It sounds demonic like no words you've ever heard before and your voice doesn't appear to be your own. Uh oh. The structure shudders. The glass thick as plate before shatters and rains down on the outside of the building. You hear a cracking. And you look outside the window and you see almost like a hole opening in the ocean itself. Blood pouring in like waterfalls. In <laughs> I don't know how you would. You are way far away from this. <laughs> uh. You see... If you look down there, what seems to be an endless black hole with the blood pouring into it. I stick my leg in it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Nicole, how much have you had to drink? <laughs> <laughs> At what seems to be a, a pace unnaturally quick, you see the waters, the blood waters, receding around the dock, and that underneath the dock, the... Because it is... A tooth. More and more of it revealing. It appears to be similar to a narwhal tooth. Longer than the rest of them. And as you're seeing this happen. The, uh, the temple itself begins to crumble. And slide. And falls into this giant maw that has opened up that all the blood's pouring into. So we're in a temple yeah. and the temple's falling in. Okay. Yeah. And that's uh that's where we're gonna stop today. Oh. So oh boy. Have, and have we we have fallen into it or are about yeah. to fall into it? You are falling into it. And you're in the okay, middle sorry. of self-diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. I was excellent. gonna do a very clever button where I woke up and said <laughs> Self-diagnostic complete. Did I miss anything good? <laughs> but you kind of headed me off at the pass there, so I guess we'll never get that going. <laughs>